Hey, what's up, good people? How you doing? Welcome back to Stock Up with Larry Jones. If you're new, go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell. Thank you. If you've been rolling with me for a while, go ahead and hit the like uh, button. Again, let's get into this data. But at the end of this, remember, Moo Moo now will give you 20, up to 20 free stock and not just 10, okay? And you're guaranteed 10 stock with just a minimum deposit of $500, right? Let's get right into it. Um, man, remember last week we had the November ISM numbers that came in, drove the market up. We've given it all back now and the market today has been fighting to see where it should be. The market is skittish, of course, of the Fed. We know that. So it gave back everything that we had. Um, we, we gained on, on last week, right? So there's a couple of dates that I want to uh, get into and uh, just kind of bounce around and give you guys some data. All right. One of the things is that I was paying attention to uh, earlier this morning on a report about tech. Right. And layoffs. So I'm going to play you a video on layoffs and layoffs are ramping up and that affects the jobs. Remember, the jobs are what's still keeping the market robust. And inflation is still, you know, we we have signs that it's cooling off. But is it enough for the Fed to back off and be less hawkish and more dovish? As a matter of fact, let's play this uh, video and um, let's go from there. That means you need to get wage inflation probably from five percent to something closer to three and a half percent. It's hard to see that without, you know, the unemployment rate moving up. You know, at least a percentage point or, or, or more. And that's likely going to involve a period, we think, of, uh, of job loss lasting you know, from 6 to 12 months. Uh, so we do think, um, again, we shouldn't rule out tail risks here, but we do think the most likely and the most reasonable expectation is that to get a lasting disinflation, you are regrettably going to need to lose a shed you know, significant amount of employment. In our, in our forecast, it's, it's a little over a million jobs that are shed before uh, you know, before the Fed is, um, you know, comfortably in easing territory. We're going to lose a li we're going to lose more than a million jobs between now and what middle of next year. No, middle, middle in our in our forecast, middle of twenty four. Uh, so a million jobs. Um, this this gentleman is from uh, J P Morgan. A million jobs is what he is saying that we will lose between twenty twenty three and twenty twenty four. That could happen really fast with these big tech companies laying off hundreds of thousands at a time. Amazon, I believe, 100,000 jobs. Um, and so, I mean, you know, some of these companies will lay off 10,000 and then 10,000. And now you, now you have 100,000 and then it goes really, really quickly. Right. Um, so remember, the strong job numbers keeps coming out. And it gives the Fed a green light to rake, to continue to spike the rate hikes up, right? And we don't want that. But it's showing right now by the job loss that we currently have that the Fed rate hikes are working because that's his job. His job is to cause unemployment. So, um, I am mostly cash now. I, I, I am not taking any risk. Remember, anything I say is not a suggestion for you to buy, hold, or sell. And I'm definitely not in this little short run right here after the ISM numbers, that little ramp up, uh, because it was a trap, all right? And uh, I will tell you, with the CPI numbers coming next Tuesday, so we have two things. We have a PPI coming this Friday. PPI, remember, the PPI is the Producer's Price Index. We went over that. The Producer's Price Index. It is exactly what it sounds like, okay? That will be this Friday, but then the following Tuesday on the 13th, we have CPI, Consumer Price Index. And if those numbers are, are not good, you know, um, uh, you know, it, it could tank the market. And so that's why I'm not taking any short term risk right now. Uh, it just makes no sense to to take any kind of risk at the end of the year 
um, and then we go into December, right? Uh, a lot of tax loss harvesting starts to take place where a lot of people uh, like me and uh, Carter Cofield discussed on our tax uh, 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 video that we did. A lot of people started to get into ETFs. So let's say you got a loss in, in Apple. So you will sell it for a loss, but then you will get an ETF with Apple in it, right? So you can still have exposure to it. So a lot of that is not happening right now. People are just gathering their cash. Institutions gathering their cash. Wells with big checks gathering their cash because they are smart money. And so are we. And why are they just gathering their cash? So they can be cashed up to buy when things go down. So many things are pointing towards a recession or another downgrade. Now, let's look at something else here. Everything is saying that we are heading to a recession. Now, there is, of course, a thin chance that we may not, right? And that chance is very thin at this point, extremely thin. And so I wouldn't be, uh, I would not be the person that would be betting against a recession because the Fed, I believe, has forced that hand. I really do. So let's, uh, let's uh, listen a little bit. And will there be a, uh, some type of recession in 2023, we'll, I guess, can we call it back to back, real back to back quarters of declining growth? Will we see that? We think so. That is our base case that the United States is going to enter a recession probably in the third or fourth quarter of next year. And that that's going to be accompanied by two to three quarters of negative GDP growth. The if there is any sort of silver lining to recession, which of course is never going to be good news for economic participants, is that we do think that that's going to be the final thing to help bring inflation down, particularly that component that's being driven by wage growth. And so you heard it. Um, I disagree with her. Of course, she has more data than I do, of course. And, uh, you know, her pay grade is higher than mine. And um, she believes that the re recession the hard recession. We're in a recession right now, good people. But she believes that the hard recession is coming in Q3. I believe it's coming in the first half. All right. Now, um, uh, nobody knows, of course, nobody can guess when a recession will hit. That's just, you know, but signs are just showing that. And I believe that when Christmas is over, the market will just get skittish and people will start to pull because one of uh, you guys commented, this will be one of the most publicized <laughs> um, recessions ever before the recession. And that is true. So now, you know, there were some people that didn't think a recession was coming. A lot of talking heads, you know, we're going to avoid it. We're going to avoid it. And now more and more people, you guys know, I have been steady saying that it is coming. And it just doesn't take a genius to see uh, with everything that's happening with earnings and all of that. And so you're going to be able to buy some good companies at good prices. Tech is doing the right thing right now. Big tech are laying off. Some of you may see that as negative. That's actually positive because they are now focusing on uh, revenue and not just growth. Tech was just just spending money, spending money, you know, trying to be the first to this or to that, uh, especially with AI. And that's the way that business is run. But in a bear market, now they have to lay off, unfortunately, operate more leaner to satisfy us, the investors, and show that they're more profitable. And so I believe that big tech will turn around in the first six months uh, of, of next year, or the first half. And so there is a lot of green to happen also and uh, some 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 positive things to happen. And that's one of the things that I think is positive. All right. So let's take a look here. We could see regardless of this is one year, regardless of where you bought it, it's, it has been a constant dumpster dive, regardless of where you bought. It's just been a constant dumpster dive. All right. Unless 
you bought here, you know, and took some profits and bought here and took some profits. But for long term investors, it's just kind of been a dumpster dive. This is just the Dow, right? It's just been a, a slow uh, a, a dumpster dive and and, you know, just trying to figure things out. When is a good time to buy? Look at this. It's just been a dumpster dive. Even when you dip by, it comes in lower. You dip by here and then it comes in lower. You dip by here and then it comes in lower. And we get these pops, right? And so for swing traders, it's been pretty good for the, those swing traders. But for uh, even for investors, it's been rough. But if you are looking out three to five years, you don't mind this. Like I don't mind it with my, some of the companies that I'm in dollar cost averaging in, but now's the time. Like I said, now is the time to have cash. You used to hear cash is trash. Well, that turned around because cash is king now. And it's king because now it doesn't matter if you were losing money because of inflation to cash in the past. That didn't matter. Because now if you if your stock, if you put it in the stock and you're and you're 40 percent down, 50 percent down in your stock, you're not losing that much with cash. So now cash is king. You want to have cash because of what's to come. And so here at Stock Up, we always say we are not scared. We are prepared. And if you really want to get an edge up, I keep suggesting to literally just open up more portfolios. I know you have ones that are just red. Just don't want to look into that. So check us out. Here we are. Uh, download the top link below. Get your 20 free stock. And if you deposit $100, you're guaranteed 10. If you deposit 1,000, you're guaranteed 20, plus a chance to get $60,000 for this holiday promotion. All right, good people. We're going to leave it right there. Um, we're going to keep you guys abreast on what's happening short term and long term to help you on your trading journey. Live, love, laugh and learn.